If we look back to the earliest times, then the sun was clearly understood as the fundamental um, object in people's existence. It brings heat and light, and those are absolutely necessary for human existence. The sun was regarded uh, by just about every civilization, I think, as some godlike object. Go for main engine start. Four, three, two, one, zero. We have booster ignition and liftoff. If I was to set off from the Earth heading towards the sun, um, as I was leaving the Earth, I think the first thing I'd notice was this incredible wind that's blowing from the sun at a few hundred kilometres a second. As I get closer, I'd notice big structures, first of all, sunspots where the magnetic field erupts through the surface, mass movements of the surface material up and sideways. It seems to look like boiling chip fat. Sunspots were first studied by Galileo. The number of them rose and fell in an 11-year cycle. In the 18th century, astronomer royal William Herschel noticed something strange. These mysterious spots on the sun seemed to be controlling events on Earth. Herschel first, if I remember correctly, correlated sunspot number with the crop returns from Oxfordshire. And this has led to centuries, really, of speculation on how the number of sunspots on the sun actually affects things on the Earth. Herschel couldn't find the link between sunspots and the Earth's weather. But two centuries on, Danish scientist Henrik Svensmark is convinced he has in something apparently unrelated, cosmic rays. If his theory is right, it might revolutionize how we see our weather. The hypothesis is that cosmic rays are affecting Earth's cloud cover. And by affecting Earth's cloud cover, it should have an effect on the Earth's climate. This could be an important link between solar activity and Earth's climate. So what are cosmic rays? Cosmic rays are produced by stars in our galaxy. In fact, stars who are exploding. Some of these particles are, of course, entering into the solar system. As I sit here and speak, uh, I'm penetrated all the time, and everybody is penetrated by cosmic rays. But what is the connection between cosmic rays, our sun, and clouds on Earth? Our solar system is shielded from cosmic rays by the sun. The sun's magnetism acts as a vast protective force field. The fires that produce the sun's heat also create violent magnetic fields. They loop into the swirling sunspots we see from Earth. The more sunspots there are, the stronger the sun's protective magnetic field. When the sun is very active, it's actually difficult for the cosmic rays to penetrate into the solar system, so not so many particles are penetrating. And if there is a relation between cosmic rays and clouds, solar activity is modulating the Earth's cloud cover. So by changing solar activity, you are changing the temperature on Earth. Strangely, the catalyst for this unusual theory was an experiment which Henrik remembered from his school days a way of making artificial clouds in a chamber with dry ice. The trails of the cosmic rays all around us are suddenly exposed as white streaks of cloud. What we are seeing is the effect of cosmic rays penetrating this chamber. We are certainly making clouds uh, here, but these are alcohol clouds. And of course, in the real atmosphere, the clouds are not alcohol. Henrik wondered if clouds in the sky were formed in the same way as clouds in the chamber. Was the Earth a giant cloud chamber? Henrik searched satellite weather data and discovered a link between cloud cover and the number of sunspots. As the sunspots increased, the clouds disappeared. And clouds are vital to global temperature. His findings were about to cause a storm. 
This uh, paper caused an enormous controversy uh, because uh, for a number of reasons. One was on technical grounds. Uh, the satellite data itself came from many different satellites uh, and the data were very selective. Uh, they excluded land, it was only over the water, they excluded the polar regions, uh, and, and so on. I was in fact surprised about, because we got such a strong reaction, uh, there was so much, uh, so much interest and so much writing in newspapers about it, all kinds of writings uh, um, and some very personal uh, attacks, I would say. So yes, I was very surprised. Stung by the criticism, Henrik went back to the drawing board. His team took a wider sample of data. Now he prepared to face the scientific community again. Recently, uh, Henrik and uh, his colleagues have published a, a new analysis, which has essentially addressed all the previous problems. And it's sufficiently good that they can actually decide that where the effect's occurring. We now know that the effect is occurring in low clouds. And that's very important, because an increase of low clouds cools the Earth, and a decrease warms the Earth. So we now finally know the sign of the effect. More cosmic rays cool the Earth, and less cosmic rays warm the Earth. If this effect is correct, I'm assuming here that the hypothesis, hypothesis is right. Scientists have discovered that under the sun's influence, cosmic rays have massively decreased over the last century, which would mean less clouds to protect us from the sun's heat. So the Earth would be getting hotter. Global warming. Yes, we've all heard of global warming. If the theory is correct, then mankind's role in global warming has been seriously exaggerated. People were saying that maybe now the sun can explain everything and you don't have to worry about CO2 and uh, stuff like that. And other people were saying that it's all nonsense about the sun uh, and everything can be explained by the CO2. So you had these two opposite groups uh, fighting each other and they're using this, uh, these results uh, as their mean. Jasper Kirkby is drawn to the theory, but he wants to prove it in a lab, a big lab. His team hoped to create clouds using artificial cosmic rays produced at a vast particle accelerator called CERN in Switzerland. If we find with the cloud experiment that cosmic rays do affect cloud formation, there would have to be certainly a major rewriting of global warming theory. In other words, the present uh, contribution of natural climate change would have been grossly underestimated and therefore the contribution of mankind would have been somewhat or grossly overestimated. If Henrik's theory is correct, then the sun has an even greater influence over our climate than we had thought. The ancients may have had a point. The sun may hold more secrets than we had ever imagined. 